If you are about to get a hair transplant in Turkey to save money, here are four things I want to bring to your attention as soon as possible so you can avoid ending up with a lifelong regret. We'll talk about four killer drawbacks of low-cost Turkish clinics, sub $3,000 clinics that are getting very popular nowadays, but I'm going to share with you how to position yourself for a successful hair transplant in case you want to go with them. So stay tuned. And before we start, shout out to our sponsor GoFiber. These are hair building fibers you can use to mask any thinning or patchy areas on your scalp to make your hair look thicker and better. So make sure you check out the link in the video description below where you can visit GoFiber, get a free sample of your choice and try them out. See if you like them. And that brings me to the drawback number one, very low doctor involvement. And it should be clear to you that if you go to Turkey for a hair transplant, paying $3,000 or less for a maximum amount of grafts, oftentimes that they quote you, 80% of your hair transplant is normally done by technicians. That means extraction, oftentimes even implantation, and oftentimes even incisions, unless you choose like VIP package uh, that some clinics in this price class start to offer nowadays because they know that consumers start to be very sensitive to this and like to get that extra incisions done by the doctor package. Unfortunately, these packages are pretty limited and they get booked quite quickly. So most of the guys just end up getting like the whole surgery done by a technician. This definitely has some disadvantages and because the technicians are uh, quite a cheap, oftentimes even underpaid workforce in Turkey, they're being also borrowed oftentimes for thir from third parties. If the clinic doesn't have enough capacity and they have too, many, too much patient inflow, they need extra workforce. So they hire them for that day or for a week if they have too much to work. And these technicians will work like busy, busy, like busy bees. These technicians may not be oftentimes in line with that high quality standard because they're coming from different uh, parts of Turkey or different parts of Istanbul. They don't have the highest quality that you would probably expect as a consumer oftentimes. You may not get what you see from other guys who went to this clinic based on online reviews, testimonials on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, forums, etc. because of that fluctuation in the workforce behind the curtains where the doctors are just overseeing everything. Maybe they are going to participate in that basic pre-consultation. They designed the hairline, but that's going to be it for the doctor involvement in most of these clinics and the rest will be done by the technician. So again, the quality fluctuations may be higher here. And that's what I've been seeing over the last couple of years from almost all of these clinics that are under $3,000 and are doing like five surgeries per day or more. So be aware of that. And if possible, always get that extra doctor involvement package if the clinic offers such package. Now, the second big drawback I'm seeing from like 80% of these sub $3,000 clinics will be inability to create a proper long-term hairline design that will also make sense in 10 years and 15 years when the patient is much older, not just right now when he's 20. Nowadays, we see many patients getting hair transplant already in their early mid twenties. That's the trend because guys want to have it done. But what they don't think about is that long-term planning and these clinics don't really convince them twice about getting more conservative hairline design. That has also something to do that the doctor is not that involved. He has maybe five minutes or 10 minutes time to speak to that patient during the consultation. It's not like that extensive three, 30 minute consultation with detailed explanations from the doctor's side. And because of that, patients are getting very aggressive hairline designs and also temporal hairline restored right in the first session already. The guy is mid, in the mid twenties or late twenties. He's not on medication. And and he's going to do like very aggressive design as some of these results I'm going to be uh, blending in here. So we can see oftentimes it's overgrafted. The number is super overquoted. The guy could have ended up easily with half of these grafts and could have uh, achieved like really nice cosmetic improvement already and saved much more grafts for the future. But no, he did already too much uh, right here. Also on the sides, you see how much hair was here like grafted on the sides. The hair that the guy didn't even need to transplant on the side because he could have just shaved the sides shorter 
So even that thinning hair that he had there previously wouldn't be noticeable. And that hair could have been spared and transplanted later on the mid scalp and crown. Or also here where you see uh, somebody getting like a huge surface grafted that wasn't even that necessary considering how much coverage he had before. So there are clinics that will do that to you and transplant a lot of grafts in between existing hair, cause shock loss obviously, especially if you are not on medication and sign you up for some additional troubles after the surgery and then you will be confused what's happening. You are not getting the ideal regrowth and stuff. And this is the problem with these clinics. So be careful next time. Now, I need to admit that there are some people who could get away with that strategy like we have seen in the example of Floyd Mayweather. He was able to get a very straight and defined hairline, also the temples restored, but he's already in his 40s. His hair loss was pretty slow for all of his life so far and his balding before the surgery wasn't so bad. It was like an over two and a half or so. He also did the beard additionally. Plus, he also has afro follicles, afro hair that is really a little bit more forgiving when it comes down to dense packing and doesn't need such a high dense packing for it to look full afterwards. So he had many advantages to uh, get that aggressive design by these sub $3,000 clinics. But many guys who are watching this video probably are not that case. You're probably younger, you're not on medication, your hair loss is way more aggressive than what Floyd Mayweather had before. And if you get such design, uh, then it's gonna be very bad in the future because trust me, you will not have enough grafts. And many guys really overestimate their donor area capacity. And by extracting three to 4,000 grafts in first session, oftentimes it can mean more than 50% donor already being gone just for a little bit of the temples and front dense packing. And you have still a lot of balding potential behind. So always be careful. And even if you think you don't have the balding potential, if you are in your mid twenties, you cannot really say for sure, right? So I always recommend you to check out extensively the before and after pictures of each clinic and see if there are such red flags that maybe doing very aggressive design on a young patient that is unnecessarily overgrafted. And if you see that, I would just turn my back against them and go to another clinic because if they are able to do it just to one person and really set this person up for troubles in the future, I'm not willing to you know, contribute to their business and support them. And if you really, really, really have to go there, well, I would at least be very vocal about having a more conservative hairline design, even if they push you into something more aggressive, what they like to do or they prefer to do, because it looks better on their testimonial or Instagram page, as we see with many Turkish Instagram clinics that are their brand names have three letters. And I'm sure many of you guys will know which clinics I mean. I'm not going to mention them. And on top of this point, I would like to advise you guys to get your first hair transplant with a surgeon that is a better specialist with hairline restoration and also spend more money on your hairline because it's very important and also your first hair transplant is the most important hair transplant so we want to invest more money in your first surgery and then maybe save your money with your second or third surgery if you need it if you are an old six who needs more hair transplants then you can obviously save uh, the money overall on multiple surgeries but don't try to save money right with the first one i do not advise it because the risk of damaging the donor is very high if you go with a cheap clinic and then even the donor will not be able to be used as greatly in the second and third surgery as it could have been if you had gone to the best doctor right away who would have left the donor looking better afterwards. Now the third drawback I'm seeing with these clinics will be temporal hair restoration. It is really no go for me, for my standards, with what I know nowadays to go to these sub $3,000 Turkish clinics for temporal hair restoration. So if you don't really feel like 100% that I want these temples restored, don't do them. And then you do temple next time with a better doctor who is really expert with temporal hair restoration. Because what I'm seeing nowadays with these clinics, they're doing temples also very mechanically, like the hairline, they just kind of dense back them they're sticking out oftentimes, the, the grafts are robust, they're not singles only in the temples. On hairlines, these 
cheaper clinics got better over the last five years. I must say, I'm not seeing so many double grafts in the hairlines of these cheaper Turkish clinics as it used to be maybe five years ago. But what I'm seeing is the robustness in the temples and not ideal way of restoring temples. You can see here some examples of temples that have not been ideally restored and oftentimes have led to contraproductive results like uh, this gentleman again who have done like a massive session on the temples and also on the pretty much like a big portion of the parietal regions and these grafts in my opinion could have been saved for mid skull and crown for the future and the sides could have been just trimmed shorter maybe pigmented with a pigmentation uh, to get a better fullness but I think this is contraproductive here because the patient seems to be shaving these sides anyways so yeah that's the problem now let's talk about the last fourth drawback of these cheaper Turkish clinics that are sub $3,000 at the moment. And guys who have been following my channel for a while, you probably know what that fourth thing is gonna be. So obviously if you go to these cheaper clinics, they like to overquote, they like to offer like high amounts of grafts, like four or five or even 6,000 for a flat fee, maybe 3,000, 2,500 and whatever. And with that high graft number, there is a risk of overharvesting and making the donor zone depleted on the sides and occipital region, which is the back of the head. And also, if they extract too many per session and they are not having a proper homogenization plan, which most of them don't have, unfortunately, especially by high sessions, then the extraction points are going to start merging together and create scar tissue. It's unfortunately permanent and requires either repair, like some new hair transplanted into that scar tissue or pigmentation or a mixture of both if it's too severe. And this is something you don't want, obviously. I'm not saying these clinics do it routinely, but the risk of that happening in that sub $3,000 price class in Turkey is the highest in Turkey. So that is why I would not mess with it and rather stay conservative. If you go to such clinic, never you know go with that highest number they propose you. Maybe tell them to go 20-30% less uh, if the quote seems to be too high to you. And if you don't know if the quote is too high for you or too low and whether the clinic is giving you a good offer, you can always consult with me because I provide second opinion on my website and get on a call with me and I can assist you one-on-one -on -one and let you know whether it makes sense or not. You can check out our Facebook group, Hair Transplant Experiences, where you can also get uh, feedback from other guys who are in the group and they can also share with you their opinions and stuff like that. So that's really crucial, not just get really sucked into one clinic and do everything what they say because it's oftentimes very kind of uh, limited and biased point of view that you get. Also, because these sub $3,000 clinics are made to, you know, be good businesses and generate good revenue and have lower cost and high profit margins, their workers are working quite fast. They are effective. They're doing like pretty decent jobs of extracting and, uh, you know, even implanting and doing incisions. And I'm seeing really decent results sometimes from these clinics. And I'm surprised really what I see. But again, the consistency is not as it should be. And also when these sessions get very high, like 4,000 grafts or more, I'm seeing problems with that donor area because they oftentimes tend to use bigger punches, they create bigger scars, and because they wanna work fast and extract fast, because oftentimes it's a one day surgery and they wanna do all of these extractions in one day, it's gonna be done fast, it's gonna affect the, negatively the transaction rate, the damage rate of the follicles during the extraction, and also survival rate of the grafts. So these are the problems that I'm seeing here, and this is no joke. So always, guys, when you go to these clinics, have that in mind and better split your surgery in multiple sessions if you feel like you are going to get into these dangerous territories of, you know, 3,500 grafts extracted and more. That was it for me, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. And for all of you guys who are interested in my one-on-one -on -one consulting services, check out the link in the video description where you can learn more about how I can share with you and help you out one-on-one -on -one with this decision process, share with you the weak and strong points of your particular hair situation. And based on that, recommend you a suitable doctor, the doctor who would be able to best deliver the results that you are wishing for. So make sure you check it out below if you're interested I'm going to be happy to help you out in person. And for all of you other guys out there, see you next time in another video. Take care.